Hello everyone, I'm Natalia and today we're going to be making this tassel necklace with a filigree ball. So what will you need to make the necklace? Well first of all you're going to need some nylon cord to form the tassel and a piece of cardboard to create the tassel with. We're using um, a piece of chain that already has a clasp attached to it as a necklace. We've got the silver filigree ball a length of 0.8 millimeter silver colored wire and I'm using 0.8 millimeter gauge and um, it's about three quarters of a meter in length, this one. I've got 18 head pins and an eight millimeter jump ring, some hematine small beads and my trusty pliers. So I've got flat nose, a round nose and some wire cutters. So let's begin making the tassel. So to make your tassel you're going to need a piece of corrugated cardboard and I just cut this off a packing box because it's nice and stiff, it's stiffer than um, cardstock. And I've created um, my little tassel maker and all I did was just cut it to the length that I want my tassel to be and then I've made an, an incision on either side on the long edge and the incisions are di directly opposite one another. You want to make sure that when you're winding your cord around to create your tassel, that the lines are going vertically on the corrugated card, otherwise it starts to bend like that. Okay, so take your cord and start to unwind the cord from the reel. It just makes it easier to do. And I'm going to place the end of my cord through one of the incisions in the card. Take it all the way around and push it through the other side, the incision there. And then I'm going to begin wrapping my nylon cord all the way along the piece of cardboard. Now, how many times do you need to do this? Well, it depends on the thickness of the tassel you want. So if you want a thicker tassel, you'll need to do several more winds. If you just want a, a slim tassel, then just wind it around the, the number of times that you're comfortable with. So I'm going to start winding the cord and then I'll show you what to do when I finish that. So when you've got the thickness of the tassel that you want, what you need to do is to just trim the piece of cord at the end, get that out of the way. And then we're going to use this cord that we put through the incisions to tie the cord together and secure it. So just take that out and then where the, cord, where the cord is actually going from the incision down to where we started winding the cord, I'm just going to cut it there. And then take that spare piece of cord right up to the top. And then I'm just going to bend my card over so that I can actually get those two pieces of cord and tie a knot in them. So all you're doing is this is a temporary a temporary fix for the top of the tassel to make sure that it stays in place whilst you attach some wire to it. And then just gently bend your cardboard to take the tassel off the card. And then there we have um, our tassel. So I need to bring my wire in at this point and I'm going to cut about um, See, about a, a six to eight centimeter length of the wire and I'm threading it through the top of the tassel where I tied this little piece of cord and I'm just going to slip that out of the way so it wants to be in the middle and then the two ends of the wire roughly meeting up there and then press that together and you find it easier to do with your with your flat nose pliers so press those two bits of wire together and then I'm going to take my round nose pliers and I'm taking them about three quarters of the way along so I want a nice big loop on this and bending the two wires to a right angle and then taking them back over the top of my round nose pliers. So at this point I can actually remove this piece of cord because it's just getting in the way and it's not actually achieving anything. And then I'm going to take hold of my wires with my round nose pliers in the loop and start to wrap them around the base of the loop like this. So 
So I'm going to do that three times, taking them back around one more time. If any of the little bits of cord get in the way, you just scooch them out of the way like that. And then I'm going to take my cutters and just cut, trim those two pieces of wire off like that. So if your loop is a little bit untidy like mine is, just take your round nose pliers and just neaten it up a little bit and then you can pop those together like that. And then also, where those two pieces of wire were, you can either trim them back a little bit more or you can use your flat nose pliers just to press them in so that they're not untidy. Just neaten them up. Okay. So, the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to secure the neck of the tassel and um, I'm going to take some of my 0.8mm wire and again I'm going to cut myself a length of wire off so um, I've cut off about 8 centimetres, 8 to 10 centimetres there and so taking the top, hold of the top of the loop and just smoothing down the fibres of the tassel I'm going to create a neck so I'm going to take my wire and I'm just going to wherever I want my neck to be which is about there it's about four centimetres down and take one end of the wire and it's easier if you grab a, a pair of flat nose pliers to do this and just tighten that around all of the, the fibres of the, the tassel. So it creates this neck. And don't worry about the bottom of it, we'll sort that out later on. And then I'm going to trim that piece of wire and just flatten it up against the other wires. And I'm going to take some of my hematine beads. So I'm going to put um, six beads on because I don't know how many I'll need because it depends on the thickness of the tassel. So just pop a few beads on and then wrap the wire and see how far it gets you but you want the beads to encircle the whole of the neck of your tassel. So how many have I got on there? Two, four, six. I'm going to see how, how far that takes me. So you're just wrapping the wire around. So really I probably need another two or three and the reason I've used 0.8 wire for this project is it's a little bit tougher um, and it's sturdier and it keeps everything in place. So probably again I'm going to need a couple more because these beads are quite small. And there we go. So now that I have, oh let's take that extra one off. Now that I have enough I'm going to just wrap the wire around again. and trim it off and then I can push that little circle of beads down over the wire just to cover those other wires and tidy it up like that. Okay now I can concentrate on the rest of my tassel and making it look beautiful because it does look a little bit messy at the moment but once we've cut those loops then the, the tassel will start to, to hang better. So you need a fairly um, sharp pair of scissors for this and you're just going to cut through all of the loops so pulling them down taut and getting to the point where all of them are free. So I think I've got just about all of them there. And then at this point I'm going to hold my smooth them all down and hold them quite tightly and then trim them so all of the ends are equal like that and this just takes a, a couple of attempts to do it right and you end up with lots of little bits left over but it gets um, the tassel very neat there and this is why you need your scissors to be sharp so that you can achieve that still got one little loop there there we go so um, straighten out your tassel, smooth it and, um, and make it look really pretty, do any kind of trimming of any ends or little spare bits of cord like I've got there um, and then we're ready to attach it to the ball and the necklace. So 
the next stage of our project is to attach the tassel to the filigree ball. And I've got some more of the 0.8 wire. And the filigree ball's got lots of holes in it. And so I'm going to disguise the wire within the holes. And I'll explain what I mean by that. So I'm going to place the wire through one of the holes in the ball. Just find one that where it'll go through easily. And it needs to come out of the other side, in, roughly in the middle. So let me find the centre, centre point of the ball, which is easier said than done. There we go, like that. And I also want the other end of this wire to go through, so I want both to go through. So again, I'm going to just go through a different hole, straighten the wire, make it easier. And then they're going to, the other end of the wire is going to come through the same hole that I found earlier. Let me just find it. So when you get to the point where you've got both ends of the wire going to the base of your filigree ball, if you just pull them tight so that the wire at the top fades into the design, the pattern on the silver ball and then you won't be able to see it. I'll just push it down the end of my pliers and then take the two ends of the wire and make sure that they are together at the base like that and dead center and then I'm going to take them to a right angle like that and I'm going to take the wires back across my round nose pliers but want them to go back across the round nose pliers at the widest part of the pliers so the loop's going to be quite big. And then before I do a wrap loop with that, I'm going to pop my loop of my tassel through the ends of the two wires. And then just holding the loop with my round nose pliers, I'm going to just make a wrap loop around the the base of the filigree ball like that so I've wrapped it around about two or three times both of those wires and just trim them off with your wire cutters and use your flat nose pliers just to push the the wires up against one another and then you can straighten out the, the loop that you've made. You can use your round nose pliers just to, to um, make sure that that's nice and tidy. And then you have a really strong connection um, because you've made two wire wrapped loops, one on your tassel and one on the filigree ball. So that, that makes it a very secure and it's quite heavy as well. So um, it will um, ensure that, um, that the tassel doesn't fall off. So then to attach it to the necklace, I'm taking my 8mm jump ring and it's a, a nice thick gauge of wire so again it's going to give it strength when we're attaching the necklace and the ball together. And I'm opening the jump ring using round, round nose pliers and flat nose pliers. Just pop that through the um, loop at the top of the ball and then I'm making sure that I've got this right at the centre of my necklace. So taking it through the centre loop at the base of the necklace and then I'm going to just close that up again so that's nice and tight and secure. Okay and so there is my filigree ball and tassel. The final part of the project is to attach the little hematine beads to my necklace and I do this by taking one of the head pins threading on a hematine bead and then I'm going to take it a few links up so you want to make sure that your your necklace is dead center and I'm going to go one two three four five six seven eight links up first of all 
and attach one of my hematine beads. So place the head pin through the loop in the chain and do a wire wrap loop with your head pin. So just taking that wire around a few times and then trimming it. and then it just has a little bead suspended from the necklace. So I'm bringing back my original piece that I made and I'll show you what I do with the, with the other beads. So I've got three of them and they are all attached to the, um, the links that are next to one another. And I put them in clusters of three and I've done them um, symmetrically and so counted the links as I've gone up. So I've put 18 all together um, and I've put them in sections of three. So that is how to make your filigree ball and tassel necklace. I hope you've enjoyed this project and all of the materials that you need to make it are on our website at www.beadhouse.co.uk. Join me again for more jewellery making adventures. Bye for now.